The first watercolor I'm going to do is going to be um, a cloudy, white cloudy sky with a blue, blue sky with white clouds in it. And the paper has been wet for about 10 minutes on both sides and it has been sitting and soaking and I'm re-wetting re the top to make sure that everything is still nice and wet. The secret to watercolor is using plenty of water uh, and that's what makes things flow. So I'm going to uh, slightly blot the excess water up and I'm going to take the excess water out of the edge so it doesn't run back into the paper and create back runs. And then it's time to paint. And I'm going to use this photograph as inspiration. And that is going to require lifting. And I'm using a special watercolor paper. It's called Fabriano Artistic. Oh, it's an Italian paper and it has a, a good lifting quality. There are other papers later on tonight. I will use um, a new paper called Terra Skin. It's made out of crushed stone and it will give a, a different effect. And I will use some Arches paper um, that does not lift once the paint is applied. So it's now time to start painting. I'm going to use a mixture of several blues I like to use cerulean blue and I like to use ultramarine and they sort of balance each other out ultramarine blue is a little bit grainy cerulean blue is a little bit on the opaque side uh, but they create a nice color for us and then I'm going to also add just a touch of quinacridone red. I make a nice soupy mixture and I decide that it's thick enough to use when I can run my finger through it and it doesn't it doesn't pull back in. So the first thing I want to do is get the excess water out of the back of my brush because it's the water that's been put on the brush and down into the ferrule and when I come back this way to paint that excess water will mix with the paint and it'll make the paints too uh, thin. So when you're doing clouds and skies in large areas you want to make sure that you've got enough paint mix so that you don't have to stop in the middle of the sky and mix more paint. There are areas of this sky that will not have any color in them. So I'm probably not going to, instead of lifting all of that up, I'm probably only going to lift, only going to paint certain areas and not have to do quite so much lifting. Usually when I'm painting a sky, I paint all the way to the bottom or almost to the bottom of the page because my, my paint, my landscape part is going to cover up without any trouble. It's usually darker than the sky and that way I don't, I don't have a, a space where the sky stops and the landscape starts. So now while that is nice and wet, I'm going to take a tissue and start pulling out some of these areas of sun rays.
long as the paper is damp and and pretty damp, um, you can go back in and move things around, um, add color. But when it's it gets to a certain point of dryness, then it's it's a disaster if you try to go back in and add more color. Most of the ridges and brush strokes will even out as the paper dries. And now I'm going to wet this little cloud area again with some clean water so I can drop in some reddish color. You can't lift like this with most watercolor papers. I don't want that red to be standing out a whole lot. I just want a hint of it in there. And I'm going to call that my sky. Hi.